Diabetes Connections is brought to you by the OneTouch brand, providing diabetes management solutions for people living with diabetes, including the OneTouch VarioFlex blood glucose meter and the OneTouch Reveal mobile app. Taking a step forward starts with seeing where you are. And by Dexcom. Take control of your diabetes with the world's first continuous glucose monitoring system that sends glucose readings directly to your compatible smart device. Live life on your own terms with Dexcom. Hey, it's Stacy. This podcast is not intended as medical advice. If you have those kinds of questions, please contact your healthcare provider. This is Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. Welcome to a bonus episode of Diabetes Connections, a little different around here for this episode. While we aim to educate and inspire about type 1 diabetes with stories of connections every week here on the show, sometimes news is breaking and things are happening and we want to get you the information as best we can. So this week I want to talk about what happened over at Animus, what Animus customers can do going forward, and what's next for the company that is now One Touch. And while there's a lot of information out there already on the Animus website and other publications have written about this, and you can get more information on everything we talk about today in the show notes that go with this episode, I, I really wanted to talk to someone from Animus and ask your questions and ask my questions and hear them you know, really tell us as much as they can what happened. So today I'm talking to Dr. Brian Levy. He is the chief medical officer for Animus and and we'll be working with one touch, as you hear me ask him in the interview. But he's also an endocrinologist. We've spoken to him before for Diabetes Connections. And I was really glad that he agreed to come on and, and talk to us as much as he can about what happened. Of course, as you hear on every episode, Animus is a sponsor. They've been with me since almost the beginning of the podcast. We started out using an Animus pump when Benny was two and a half in July of 2007. And we just switched to the T-Slim, a tandem product, about a month ago. And I'll talk more about our experience and, and some opinion stuff and my take on things after this interview. But it's important to point out that, as you know, uh, yes, Animus was a sponsor and One Touch has stayed on to support the show. So I'm thrilled because we use their products as well. But that said, they're not paying for this interview. They didn't limit what I could ask. So I hope you'll learn something I did. And again, I'll give you more of my take after you hear my conversation with Dr. Brian Levy. Dr. Levy, thanks for spending some time with me. I'm sure this is a busy time, a lot going on and a lot of questions. So I appreciate you, you answering some for, for me and my listeners. Thanks very much. I'd be happy to. Thank you. Okay. So I don't know how much you can even tell us, but let's start just with the big picture. You know, what happened here? Why did Animus shut down? Sure. Great place to start. I think first, let me set the stage for you about this topic so that your listeners are aware of what was announced on October 5th. Following an exhaustive review of all viable options, it was determined that Animus has proved too difficult to sustain as a business and that Animus would need to exit the insulin pump business and therefore discontinue the manufacturing and sale of Animus Vibe and the One Touch Ping insulin pumps. And as part of this decision, Animus will close its U.S. and Canadian operations over a period of time. A decision and timing to exit markets outside of the U.S. and Canada is still pending. Consultation with relevant work councils in outside U.S. and Canada countries. So the day this news was announced, formal U.S. and Canadian patient letters were produced and then mailed. And we got the word out on Facebook and Twitter to inform patients and caregivers as soon as possible. And at this point, all U.S. and Canadian patients should have received their letters by mail. Now, you asked, why did Animus shut down? And it's complex, but insulin delivery and pumps are a very challenging therapeutic area with changing patient needs. There's rapidly evolving market dynamics and increased competitive pressures. And the decision was extremely difficult and followed the extensive exploration of all other viable options for the Animus business. And because patient care and continuity still is our top priority in Animus, 
We selected Medtronic as our partner of choice. But of course, patients have the freedom to choose the system that works best for them. And so we encourage them to work with their healthcare professionals to identify the best next steps when it's time to transition. So let me stop there and see what that generates for you in terms of questions. (laughs) Thanks. Yeah, uh, there's so much to still ask. Let let me quickly ask you to clarify, outside of the U.S., how much of a worldwide presence is Animus? Forgive my ignorance, but our, you know, number of countries, I mean, it's every country would have its own regulations and things like that, but how big of a project is that to figure out the timeline abroad? It's big, and each country has its own rules and regulations, as you said. So a good chunk of our business is in Europe, as you can imagine, in most of the Western European and Scandinavian countries. But we also have a presence outside of Europe in Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, the Middle East. So it's a pretty extensive evaluation that has to go on. Is there any estimated timeline or you don't know yet? And I'd give you that timeline at the present time. It's all being worked on. Sure. So let's talk about U.S. and Canada then. What do current customers need to know? As you said, the social media announcement went out. You do have a website set up. The letters went out. But can you take us through the warranty, the deadlines, that sort of thing, as to when people who currently use Animus need to start making a choice? Can you take us through the, some of the specifics? Sure. So the first thing patients using an Animus pump and the Animus pump supplies need to know is that they will experience no immediate changes. Animus, as a company, is committed to continuing to provide our usual customer service and warranty support, including providing pump supplies that are used in conjunction with the Animus 5 and the one-touch ping through a transition period. And as I think you know, each person's warranty date or warranty date expiration is different. So there is an easy guide that was included in the patient letter, and it's also posted at www.animuspatientsupport.com that walks through the timings. In addition, we know many patients and their families have unique situations. So we have certainly bolstered Animus's customer care to walk our patients through their questions. And that number in the U.S. is 1-800-661-1730. Does that help? Sure, sure. I mean, you know, as you say, yeah. Everyone has a slightly different situation because everyone has a slightly different date. But there is this hard deadline of September 30th, 2019. So for people mm-hmm. who have their pumps warranty expiring after that date, they will be contacted yes. by Medtronic. And this is a transfer to no cost to the 630G. But when will those phone calls start happening? Have they already started happening? Can people delay that if they want to stay on the Animus system for a while? So our, as I said, customer service and all the services it provides remain open 24-7. Animus will continue to honor all of its warranties. So you can call the Animus customer care as you normally would have in the past. And no one is rushing patients, if that's the right word, off of an Animus pump onto another pump. I think in order to provide the best quality of transition care for our patients, which is really an important priority of ours, I think it's obvious to you, you can't transfer patients all at once. Mm -hmm. We have a patient user base globally of about 100,000 people on pumps right now. And so it will be a gradual process to transition patients off of their animus pump. In terms of those that have a warranty that expire later, and you said the date, so you obviously got that information from a press release. um, (laughs) And as a user, I got it, I got it in the mail too, because we have an animus. Oh, of course. (laughs) Of course you do. Forgive me. That's okay. That's okay. On or after September 2019, the patient and or their pump supplier will be contacted by a member of the Medtronic transition team concerning the option to transfer to a Medtronic pump at no cost. So, yes, they will receive calls. I cannot comment on when those calls will come through as yes. 
So what happens if I am a current customer and my pump breaks or I need yeah. supplies? You know, what happens there? Yeah. So as I said, Animus customer care is in business still 24-7. So Animus will honor all warranties. If the pump breaks, you call the Animus customer care number and you can still continue to order your Animus supplies through our customer care inside sales. A question that was sent to me to ask you was, well, if my, you know, in the past, if there's a problem with the pump, Animus sends me a new pump. And you always were fantastic about that kind of customer service. Do you have pumps to send out if something happens or is that a problem? Yes, indeed. No, no, it's not a problem. Our manufacturing facilities are still up and running to meet the needs of our patients as we slowly transition and close down our business. So yes, if your pump breaks and as a patient, you require a brand new pump under warranty, you can get a brand new pump. What we don't do is sell new pumps any longer. That stopped with the announcement. What happens to the technology that Animus spent all that time and money to develop? I mean, does that kind of stay out there? Does it go in a file cabinet? Nobody sees it. You know, I know you were all on track for the predictive low glucose and, you know, hyper hypo minimizer and hopefully one day a a closed loop. What happens to all of that? So we call that intellectual property and um, the intellectual property that Animus has developed, other than that under which other parties may have an interest under terms of agreements we have established, will remain with Animus Corporation, and it has not been decided at this point as to what will happen with all of that intellectual property. So let me ask one more question on that. Again, I don't know if you can answer this, but I I spoke to a few people, including on this podcast, Jeffrey Brewer from Bigfoot Biomedical, who was the head of JDRF at the time when JDRF gave a lot of money to Animus and, and other companies to do research on continuous glucose monitoring and integrated pumps. And he was outspoken, and I would say kind of angry about what happened here. Is there any chance that that research could turn into something? As you said, you haven't decided or Animus, you know, the intellectual property is, it still exists. So it does. And as I mentioned, I talked about other parties that we've had agreements with. One of those parties is JDRF, as you mentioned. So I cannot comment to you about specifics of each of our individual agreements. But discussions are going on with any of the people we have agreements with. Okay. I'm going to read between the lines and say that there's some hope. You don't have to say anything. (laughs) You know, one of the things that, that people have also reacted to is that the switch to Medtronic. And you've said several times that people do have options. You may think that it is obvious and you may think that, you know, you, you've made that clear, but can you reiterate what someone might do? I mean, I know it's not your business to, to be a salesperson for companies like Tandem and Omnipod and things like that, but it, you're not penalized if you're an Animus customer and you don't want to go to Medtronic. No, you are not penalized in any <laughs> way. Um, Animus firmly supports patient choice. And myself as an endocrinologist, I support patient choice. We believe all patients have the option of making their own personal decision when it comes to choosing the insulin pump that works best for them. But importantly, we strongly encourage patients and their caregivers to work with their endocrinology and diabetes care team to determine the best next insulin delivery option for them. So no, there is no obligation to transition to Medtronic. I will explain why Animus selected Medtronic as a partner of choice it's really important that we're able to provide an option that ensures a seamless insulin delivery system transition for our animal patients, caregivers, and healthcare providers. And we landed on Medtronic for more than 30 years. I think you know Medtronic has been the global leader in insulin pump therapy for patients living with diabetes. And we're confident that they will provide great care and support to our Animus patients and their care teams. But as I said, patients who do not wish to transition to Medtronic can, of course, exercise that choice. Again, I don't know if you want to answer this question, but I'll ask because I'm nosy. So what happens to you? 
You've been the chief medical officer at Animus. Uh, you're an endocrinologist. Where are you going? What Are you going with the transition to one touch? Will I be speaking to you again? I mean, what's going on with you, Dr. Levy? So that's all being worked out. I have been with Animus and the Johnson & Johnson Diabetes Care Companies for the last six or more years. I continue to be committed to Animus during this transition period, the time of which is still to be determined. I'm also committed to the other aspects of the Johnson & Johnson Diabetes Care Companies. So that includes One Touch or LifeScan. And um, we'll continue to work with people with diabetes and physicians in the service of LifeScan and One Touch for sure. So I'm not going anywhere. I'm not disappearing. <laughs> Let's talk about One Touch if we could too, because a study just came out. We've used, um, I should be very clear. So we've used the um, Animus products for 10 years. We started on the 2020, then we went to the Ping, and uh, we recently switched to the Tandem T Slim just because of the larger cartridge. But the cart that, but that uh-huh. setup, yeah, we really, I have a teenager, but that setup came with a one touch Varioflex IQ, I want to say. And I, I love it. I mean, having used the same meter for a long time, I didn't really think it would matter that we switched, but we love it. It's so clear. And I just want to talk to you, if I could, about a study came out about improvements in glycemic control. What was this study all about? And I know it wasn't with the IQ, right? It was the Varioflex? Yes. The Vario IQ and the Vario Flex, by having the word Vario in them, use the same strip technology, okay? So in terms of the accuracy and precision of the strip, they're identical. The features of the meters are a little different, okay? So a study was just published in the JMIR Diabetes Journal, which is a journal on technology, and the findings show that Using our one-touch Varioflex system alone as a standalone meter or in combination with our one-touch reveal mobile app, which is an app that hopes to have patients and their healthcare professionals gain insights or better insights into their diabetes management, both groups had associated significant improvements in glycemic control over a six-month period of time. So really encouraging that devices like our OneTouch Varioflex, which have what is known as color sure technology, which on the meter shows a patient right away, is their glucose in range, above range, or below range? That range should be set by their healthcare professional. Helps to immediately guide them as to how they're doing. And then taking that information and putting it in the OneTouch Reveal mobile app, which helps to integrate in a iPhone look, user-friendly way of seeing all of your glucose values in conjunction with other things you're doing, such as your activity, your diet, your medications, really helps patients to gain insights. And um, hopefully also, importantly, have a better communication or conversation with their healthcare professional when things are not going well, and even when things are going well, to have that positive engagement between the patient and the healthcare team. In this study, it talks a little bit about um, improvements were greatest with people with type 2 diabetes, um, and they got the most, the highest number of healthcare provider text messages. My husband has type 2. I'm really interested in that. Mm-hmm. What, what does that mean? They got, through the app, they got text messages uh, to help them? No. What it means is that every two weeks within the study, Ah. the healthcare professional was asked to look at one touch reveal professional version in their office and could text message back to a patient if they felt any changes in management might be needed. So it was a way of improving communication. Now, Why did the type 2 patients do a little better than the type 1 patients, although type 1 patients did well as well? I think it could be something as simple as understanding that type 1 patients have frequently been living with their disease for a longer period of time. They tend to be younger, a little more technology savvy, um, a little more tuned into the meaning of glucose values and how to correct them. A lot of this is lost in type 2 education 
firstly, because there are so many type 2 patients out there and primary care doctors do not have a lot of time to spend with them. And so by having technology such as our meters and our app to engage the patient living with type 2 diabetes, to have the patient with type 2 diabetes start to make sense of their own numbers, this may be why improvements in their glucose control are seen. It was interesting to find out because, as I said, my husband has type 2. I couldn't imagine him getting a lot of text messages. It didn't, you know, they don't, he doesn't manage his care like that. So two weeks makes a lot more sense. Hey, yeah. um, before, uh-huh. I, yeah, he would be like, turn that off. I'm not interested. Um, before uh-huh. I let you go, you are an endocrinologist. You have worked in the diabetes sphere for a long time. There was... Every time a pump company goes out of business or we lose a choice, you know, it's so upsetting for people who use this technology, even people who never used or wanted an animus system. We're so sad to hear this news because, and I believe this, we need competition to push everybody ahead to keep it going. What is your take on what we're going to see in the next couple of years? Are you hopeful for people with type 1? Is the pump business just too difficult? Is it only going to be Medtronic? You know, they're not evil, but you just don't want one company. I'd love to get your take if you can share, you know, absent your spokesperson hat here as an endocrinologist, you know, what what do you want people with diabetes to know about this? So I want people with diabetes to have choice, choose the best way to manage their diabetes that works for them. That's my wish. That's been my commitment in managing people with type 1 diabetes and type 2, but we'll talk about type 1 for the past 30 or more years in my own career. The tough business, I tried to allude to that earlier in the call. The decision taken by Animus was not taken lightly. As I said, exhausted efforts were genuinely made to figure out what the best solution for the future of Animus would be. I'm going to be optimistic. I can't predict a crystal ball in the future, so I'll leave it at that. But I don't think insulin pumps are going away. Let me put it that way. They really are the way to treat people living with type 1 diabetes. Well, I really appreciate your time. Was there anything that I missed that you wanted to make sure to talk about, either with One Touch or with Animus? Um, yeah, so Stacy, I, I think what I want to say is that I'm incredibly grateful to our patients and our healthcare partners, all the trust, confidence, and loyalty they have placed in Animus products over the last 12 years. And you asked this, but I will say it again. I will, of course, continue to work with people with diabetes and their physicians in the service of LifeScan and OneTouch. The relationships I have and my clinical team and all of our Animus employees have, you know, have really forged great relationships and experiences with people like you and countless other patients with type 1 diabetes and family members of patients with type 1 diabetes. It's all been an incredible experience. And and I just want to thank you and everyone who has supported Animus over these years. Thank you. Uh, Well, I really appreciate your time. I'm, you know, it's a sad moment, but I appreciate the information. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, as usual. (laughs) You're listening to Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. All of the information, the websites, the phone numbers, everything he talked about, you can find in the show notes that go along with this episode and at diabetes-connections.com. I will link up to the original Animus statement. There's a lot of information there. And again, as Dr. Levy says, you do have choices. Everybody has an offer right now. Tandem's uh, current offer, as I'm taping this at the end of October, is a monetary one. You have to pay. I think it's a free offer still from Omnipod, and and much of the offer from Medtronic is free as well. But with Tandem, you do have to pay. But all of the updates that happened in 2018, they haven't said if it'll be further than that, will be free. So you can find out more about that. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm not a spokesperson for any of the pump companies. I don't have as any special information. I'm a customer, like most of you as well. Look, will we ever have all the information about Animus and what happened? No. Do I think that they didn't get enough money? Did Johnson & Johnson just not get the offer they wanted? 
you know, maybe that's what happened. I can't really speculate because I, I don't have the information, but it's sad all around. I'm a little encouraged to hear that the intellectual property is still there. I don't know about you. I have this vision in my mind of them, you know, like in, in Indiana Jones when they get the Ark and then they put it in a box and they bring it in the back and there's 4,000 boxes and it's blocked up back there and you never see it again. It's like, oh, please don't let that happen. And he mentioned the partners. You've got to think that the things that they did with Dexcom, at least, may see the light of day. And maybe there's some European or Australian studies that may see the light of day. So again, I don't have any special information about that. And if I do, I will pass it along to you. Before we go, I, I just want to share a little closing thought, a parting thought about Animus. So sad. But, you know, I have so many great stories that have that go back to using their products. And it's funny, just, you know, for me in 2007, when we chose the pump, I will never forget giving it to Benny. Uh, we weren't even on sailing yet. We just were letting him get used to the, the feel and what it was. And I, you know, here's a, an insulin pump and it's so exciting. And he, he did what a lot of kids would do, right? He held it in his hand. He looked at it and he chucked it across the room and it bounced. And I was, oh my gosh, he's never going to put this thing on. And but it was in great shape. It didn't break. Nothing happened. No dents, no dings. And we, you know, we kept explaining. And what, how do you reason with a two and a half year old? I can't even remember what we said. But by bedtime that night, I said, do you want me to take the pump? Are you going to sleep with it? You know, because it wasn't attached yet. And he said, mine. It's mine. And he never gave it back. He never had a problem with it after that. And he's only taken one three day pump break in all the time. You know, it's 11 years July this past July, that we started using an insulin pump. He took a three-day break in all that time. It's really worked well for us. So I'm sad to see Animus go. I am, I'm still excited and optimistic about the future, but it's, um, it's not easy. It's not easy to think about that. It's a big change for a lot of people. And as, you know, we're customers too, you're not alone. So I hope this helped a little bit, a little bit of information out there, maybe a bit more than you've heard. All of the info, all the phone numbers and websites, as I said, on diabetes-connections.com or in the show notes. Glad to have been able to bring you a bonus episode, some extra content this week. And please come back on Tuesday. You may have heard that Dexcom is doing a big charity push, their warrior call for November. We will be talking to Dexcom warrior Eric Pasley, country singer and such a nice guy. I'm really excited to talk to him and learn more about what he likes about Dexcom. And did you know... He is a patient, or he was when he was a kid, of Dr. Stephen Ponder of sugar surfing fame. We've had him on the show a couple times. And Eric Pasley, is, uh, he grew up going to see Dr. Ponder as his endo. It is a small world. All right. Well, I appreciate you being here for this bonus episode. You can always reach out to me on social media or email Stacy S-T-A-C-E-Y, at diabetes-connections.com. And I'll see you back here on Tuesday. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged. <laughs>